Hey everyone, Effie here. Today I'm going to show you how to stamp and assemble our Majestic Monarchs pop-up stamps and dies. This was just released today and it is available on pre-order and will begin shipping next week on the 13th. Now, this is a really beautiful pop-up design. The stamps and dies are separate. The die collection features eight dies. This particular die will cut out two pieces. This die here will cut out three pieces and these two here will cut out one piece. And then these four dies here will cut out the individual butterfly images that are in the Majestic Monarch stamp set. So this is a nine by 12 inch stamp. It is large and it is beautiful. It has several cluster stamps. You have one, two, three cluster stamps. This one, I'm going to show you how to use that later. And then you have the four individual butterfly stamps in the set. And the coordinating die collection has the individual dies that you can die cut those out. And I'm just going to show you the coordinating dies that will cut out those three large clusters in the Majestic Monarchs. And you're going to position the dies over the stamped images just like that. And I'm being a little bit more meticulous in showing you guys this process because positioning your stamps when you're stamping on your cardstock is important. I wanna make sure that when you're die cutting that you get all the tabs and spacing right. So this is the stamp and the coordinating die. So you can see there's a tab portion at the top. If you position your stamp too high on your cardstock, when you go to die cut the stamped image, a portion of that tab is going to get cut off if you don't leave enough room at the top. So make sure you leave plenty of room at the top when you're stamping this large image on your card sock. And I'm just going to repeat the same process with the two other larger clusters in the Majestic Monarch set. This is the middle cluster. And here you can see that there's a tab piece towards the left side of the die. So you wanna make sure that when you stamp this stamp, you're not bringing that stamp all the way to the left edge. You wanna make sure that there's some room along that left edge. So after I've positioned it onto my cardstock, I'm just gonna make a little tick mark at the edge and then slice my cardstock. I'm going to show you the last piece. This is the last large cluster in this set. It's a little bit longer and a little bit more narrow than the other pieces only the stamp because the actual die cut is going to be a lot larger. As you can see, there is a lot more going on along the bottom half of the die cut. So you wanna make sure that for that stamp, you leave some room along the bottom half of your cardstock. So now I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the three large clusters, and I'm just using our Caviar Hybrid ink, and I'm just using regular white cardstock. You don't wanna use cardstock that's too thick, otherwise your card is going to be very bulky. I'm going to double stamp all of my stamping today, but I'm just showing you as I stamp one because the video is already going to be a little long. I do double stamp everything so that I get a nice crisp, dark image. It doesn't matter what order you stamp your images. The only thing that matters at this point is making sure you leave sufficient room on your cardstock. Before I do any die cutting, I'm gonna go ahead and color in all of my butterfly images and I'm using a combination of my FY1 and YR68 Copic markers. It's just a yellow and an orange Copic marker. You do not need these specific colors and you don't even need these specific Copic markers, you can use Zig markers, you can use Tombow markers, you can use any markers you have on hand. So after I've applied my base layer of that yellow hue down into the butterfly wings, I'm gonna go ahead and add some contrast with the orange Copic marker. And then I'm gonna go back to the yellow and just blend some of that orange out. This is not necessary. You don't need to blend it out. You can just leave the hard edges of the orange in there if you're going for that particular look. But for today, I wanted a softer blend. And for this cluster of butterflies, I went in with the orange first and then blended it out with the yellow instead of going with the yellow, orange, and then yellow again. So this time I kind of cut out 
the one step and I went with the orange first and then blended it out with the yellow and it came out perfectly fine. So here you can see I have one butterfly not colored in. Don't worry about that. That is going to be covered up later. I didn't want to waste any time by adding coloring to that. So here you can see I gold heat embossed the stamps and then colored them in with a combination of three pink zig markers and the gold and pink just they just scream jewel tones to me and I'm absolutely in love with this combination. I also stamped and colored a purple version to show you guys that we don't always need to go with the traditional yellow and orange for our monarch butterflies. They are the colors that I tend to gravitate to first when I first start coloring in the monarchs, but then I decide, you know what, I can use some different colors. Let's go with some blues or purples or pinks. I like using different color combinations to spice things up. And once all the coloring is finished, let's get to die cutting. I'm going to put this first piece in, put that sandwich through. I'm going to take this piece out. Before I separate the die from the cardstock, I'm going to put the next piece in. So while I'm separating this, you can see this creates one big die cut. Put that aside, take the second piece out, and then put the next piece in before I se start separating. So here, this die will cut out three pieces. Keep the pieces together so that we don't get confused later. So put these aside. Let's take the next set and put the last piece in. The last piece that just went in was the base. So this piece here is going to cut out two pieces and we're going to put them aside after I pop them out. And then the last piece is going to come out of the die cutting machine. This is the base and everything is just going in an assembly line. If you have a larger die cutting machine, you can cut everything at once go ahead. So next we're going to take this stamp from the Majestic Monarchs and this die cut and we're going to stamp the back of it. So we're going to take the negative piece, flip it over. We're going to insert that die cut in and we're going to stamp the back of it using this stamp and I'm going to double stamp it but I only showed you once. So I'm going to double stamp it to get that nice crisp image and then color in the butterfly wings using the same markers that I used earlier. So you want to save your die cuts after you die cut so that you have that one uh, remaining negative piece to finish off the stamping of this piece. Once you finish coloring in this piece you're going to see that it has a slit in the top portion. It has a tab on the left portion and a slit in the top. And then this piece that die cuts together also has a slit and a tab on the left side. So we are going to get ready to assemble. You're going to take your base and you can see that there is a scored V along the center and there's also a scored line down the center as well and then two slots on the left and right side so you want to make sure that as you're assembling you don't want that v to be upside down you want the v to be a proper uh, v as you're assembling so just fold it in half along that scored line put it aside we're going to take this piece right here there's a score line down the center and two score lines right along the two tabs now we're going to flip this piece over and fold these two tabs back once you've done so you're going to take your piece and then you're going to fold along that scored center line now you're going to take some liquid adhesive Put some of that glue along the tabs, on both tabs, and then we're going to adhere this onto the base. So you want to position the point at the front along the point of the V, and you want to place those tabs inside that scored V. It's going to be very easy to know where to place the tabs because you have that scored area on the base. And you can use a bone folder to help get into the nooks and crannies. At this point, you want to make sure that you're able to fold your base. So you can go ahead and fold it to make sure that the butterfly wall that we just put down, I'm going to call that piece the butterfly wall, you can make sure that that folds correctly. And while we're assembling, you can always keep folding your base in half to make sure that everything is folding properly. So you can do that intermittently as we are assembling. Next, we're going to take this piece and this is just going to go over that 
partial butterfly that we did not color in on the butterfly wall. So you're just going to glue it on top just like that. And you're going to see that you're going to be able to fold it easily. It doesn't interfere with the folding mechanism or motion. So now we have these two pieces, the pieces with the slits. So you're going to take this piece right here and you have the tab on the left and this tab is going to go into this slot right here. So as we put the tab into the slot, you want to kind of bend this butterfly wing back or downwards as you're inserting that tab. Then the tab you can see in the back, you want to make sure you glue it down towards the base and not up towards the butterflies. If you glue this tab the wrong way, your pop-up is not going to fold correctly or you're not gonna be able to fold it easily inside your card. So just put some of your liquid adhesive on the bottom of that tab and then fold it down and make sure that it is facing the bottom or the base. Now that we have this piece situated, you can see that we have the slit located right over here. And then we're gonna take the second piece, which also has a slit, and we're just gonna slide the two slits into each other, and we're gonna kind of lock them in place this way. Once we've done that, you have that tab on the bottom that we're just going to slide into the slot along that base. So here, just insert the tab. And then when we glue this tab, you wanna make sure that the tab is facing that center score line. You don't want to glue that tab towards the outer edge of the base. You wanna make sure it's facing the inner score line. And this is gonna help it fold properly. So here you can see we are halfway done. At this point, you can open and close that base to make sure you are doing this correctly at this point. And I just flipped this over to show you guys what direction the tabs should be glued. Assembly is really not that difficult. It's a little, it might be confusing at first because there are a lot of pieces, but the assembly itself is not difficult. It's actually very easy once you kind of get the steps down. And here I'm just detaching the two pieces just to show you guys how they should be situated. And you can keep opening and closing your base to make sure that these are properly glued down in every which way. So here I'm just tamping down on the tabs to make sure that they are adhered nicely. I'm using Thermoweb's Ultra Bond Adhesive. It's really great for working with these pop-ups. So next we're gonna take this piece and you can see we have this half wing on the bottom and then there are score lines here here right here on the bottom right here right here here and then what we want to do is we're gonna fold this bottom piece you're gonna fold it up we have the two butterflies on the left you want to make sure just hold that down with your thumb and then there are score lines up top here you're gonna fold these score lines you're gonna fold the piece down towards you you're gonna fold it three times once you fold it this piece three times we're going to bring that butterfly at the top we're going to bring it around and that half butterfly that was along the bottom portion this is going to be glued on top of the right side of the wing of the butterfly on top so we're going to bring it around and then we're just going to glue this bottom piece onto the full butterfly so when you look from above you're gonna see a fully designed butterfly, just like this. And you can see that there is a square and you can pop this down, you can fold it down just like this. So this is an additional pop-up mechanism that we are including. So put some glue along that half wing and then bring that top butterfly around and glue that down just like this. When you're done gluing, as you have the two larger butterflies in your left hand, you can push this part down just like this. And this is how it's going to close in your card. So you don't want to push it down any other way. It's gonna be hard to do that. You wanna make sure that these two are facing up and then you have this tab at the top. The tab is gonna go into the slot on the butterfly wall 
and then the bottom tab is going to go into the last remaining slot on the base. So here is just a close up of the base and we're going to start to insert the two tabs all at once. Once we've inserted the tabs, we're going to glue the tabs down. As you're gluing down any tab, you always want to make sure you're going with the folding motion. You never want to go against the grain. If you ever have issues with the folding or pop-up mechanisms, check your tabs. It, if it's not closing correctly, you might have glued down that tab the wrong way. So this tab, once you've glued it down, you want to make sure it's facing down towards the base and not towards the top of your butterfly uh, mechanism. So you want to make sure that it's facing down towards the bottom of the base instead of the butterflies. And then flip it over and glue down this tab at the bottom. And then that one is going to face the back or rear of your base. And then again, open and close the base to make sure everything is closing and opening uh, fluidly and easily. So, and I'm just showing you guys up close where the tabs should be situated on our base. And I'm opening and closing. You can see that it is easy to open and close. So now we are going to take the last piece. But before that, check out this divot here on this mechanism and then take that last piece. You're going to be gluing this portion. You can see this divot in the right side of this butterfly wing and you're going to insert it right along the piece down here and you're going to match up the two divots. So apply some glue on that mechanism right there and I'm showing you guys up close and then place your butterfly wing. We're going to match up the divots. I apologize. I said insert earlier, but we're not inserting anything. We're just placing the butterfly wing on top of the mechanism by matching up the two divots on the mechanism and the right side of the butterfly wing. And the pop up is complete. All we need to do is include this inside an A2 card base. I'm going to put this into an A2 size card base, which is four and a quarter by five and a half, or rather it's eight and a half by five and a half, uh, and then fold it in half. As you glue this inside your A2 card, you want to make sure you leave about a quarter inch at the top. Don't bring the base too low inside the center of your card. Otherwise, it's going to stick out from the bottom. So once we have both sides of that base glued into your card base, it's complete. It's done. We are finally here. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comments and I will get back to you if anything is confusing. And if you haven't done so already, check out our new release blog post with all the details for our August 2021 release. And also be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel because I update it regularly. I will leave the links in the description box so that you can easily navigate to all of the wonderful details. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you next time.